We are going to get started, everybody. Repeat after me. You know what to do. Hello, boys and girls. Excellent. All right. Repeat after me. I'm just using my hands today. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Ti, ti, ta, ta, a. Ta, a, ta, a. Ta, a, rest. Ti, ti. Ti, 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 rest. Ti, ti. Triple T T T triple T T Triple T triple T triple T T Nice T T T T T rest T T T T rest Nice job guys one more T T T T ta T T. All right, excellent job. Now today, I want to kind of pick up where we left off last time, um, and we had started talking about ways that we can give musical responses. And I do see that some people have already done their musical response homework for the week. Um, if you were not able to join us on um, Tuesday, we talked all about um, dynamics and tempo and texture. And I do have our link up so that you can uh, rewatch that if you need to. But I also put the directions in the third grade um, in like the classroom section at the very top. So that if you need to know how to get into that uh, assignment and know what to do, you can. But make sure that you get in there because I want to know not only what is the music that you listen to, but I want to hear those musical reasons that you like the song or that you can listen to the song and know what some of those musical parts are about it. Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it loud? Is it quiet? And then what do you like about the song? Do you like that it's fast? Do you like that it's loud? Do you like the words to it? Why do you like the words? Do, do the words calm you? Do the words make you feel happy or like you wanna dance? Make sure that you give me all of those types of information and you answer all of the questions in complete sentences. All right, you guys have until Monday to get that done for me. All right. So today we're going to take one of those elements and we're going to start working on texture over the next uh, about week, week and a half or so. So here's what we're going to do. Today we're going to start a, a story called Peter and the Wolf. All right. And I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about it. We're going to watch a video of someone reading it to us. And I just want you to listen to it and see if you can figure out what the plot of our story is. All right. So again, I'm not going to tell you a whole lot until we get done with the story because I want you to hear it first. And then we're going to see if music actually makes a difference in the way that we hear things. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's see here. Bada bing. Bada boom. And I want to share my sound. Perfecto. And I'm going to present. You know me. I'm making all sorts of different music classes, right? So here's my Peter in the Wolf classroom. And I want us to listen to our story first. The duck was delighted that. Hello, everyone. Today we will be reading Peter and the Wolf. This was translated by Maria Carlson and is illustrated by Charles Miklok Yakak. To Matthew, who likes pictures, and to Linda, who likes music. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and walked out into the big green meadow. In a tall tree sat Peter's friend, a little bird. 
Everything in his calm and quiet, the bird chirped merrily. Waddling behind Peter came a duck. The duck was delighted that Peter had not closed the gate, and she decided to go for a swim in the deep pond in the meadow. Seeing the duck, the little bird flew down and sat on the grass beside the pond and shrugged. What kind of bird are you if you can't fly? she said. And what kind of bird are you if you can't swim? the duck answered. And she plopped into the pond. They argued for a long time. The duck, swimming around the pond, the little bird hopping along the bank, Peter suddenly noticed a cat stealing through the grass. The cat thought, that bird is busy arguing and now is my chance to catch it. Silently on velvet paws, the cat crept toward the bird. Look out, Peter called just in time and the little bird quickly fluttered up into the tree. The duck quacked at the cat angrily from the middle of the pond. The cat paced around the tree. Is it worth climbing up that high, he thought? By the time I get up there, the bird will have flown away. Peter paid no attention to what his grandfather said. Oh. Peter's grandfather came out of the house. He was angry because Peter had gone past the gate into the meadow. There were dangerous places out there. What is a wolf? What if a wolf should come out of the woods? Peter paid no attention to what his grandfather said. Brave boys like Peter were not afraid of wolves. Nevertheless, his grandfather took Peter's hand and led him back home and closed the gate firmly. Just then, a huge gray wolf did come out of the woods. That cat quickly climbed the tree. The duck quacked and scrambled out of the pond. But no matter how fast the duck tried to run, the wolf ran faster. He came closer and closer. He caught up with her, he grabbed her, and swallowed her. Whoa. Now the cat perched on the branch of the tree, the little bird on another, farther away from the cat. The wolf paced around the tree, looking up at them with hungry eyes. Peter, who stood behind the closed gate, had seen everything that had happened, but he wasn't at all frightened. He ran home, found a heavy rope, and then climbed up on the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree reached as far as the wall. Peter grabbed the branch, the branch and nimbly climbed into the tree. He said to the little bird, circle around the wolf's nose, but be careful not to let him catch you. The little bird flew down and almost touched the wolf's nose with her wings, and the angry wolf jumped every which way. Oh, how the little bird teased the wolf. How the wolf wanted to catch her, but the little bird was quick, and the wolf could do nothing. Peter made a loop at the end of his rope and lowered it slowly, caught the wolf's tail in it, and pulled it tight. The wolf knew he was caught, and in his rage, he jumped about, trying to free himself. But Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree. The more the wolf jumped, the tighter the he pulled the rope around his own tail. Just at that moment, some hunters came out of the woods. They had been tracking the wolf and were firing their rifles. Peter called to them from the tree. Don't shoot. The little bird and I have already caught the wolf. Help us take him away to the zoo. And so they did. Just imagine the triumphant procession. Peter walked in front. Behind him came the hunters leading the wolf. Peter's grandfather and the cat came last. Grandfather shook his head with displeasure. And what if Peter had not caught the wolf, he said. What then? Above them flew the little bird chirping. Hurrah for Peter and me. Just see what we have caught. And if you listen very carefully, you will hear a duck quacking in the wolf's stomach, for the wolf, in his haste, had swallowed the duck alive. Well, 
that was good. All right, guys, I have a question for you. I want you to be honest. Give me a thumbs up if that was like the most awesome book you've ever heard in your life. Give me a thumbs to the side if it was okay. Give me a thumbs down if it was a snore fest, if it was kind of boring. And you can be super honest with me. I'm seeing a lot of this. I'm seeing some of this. All right. So the story of Peter and the wolf is actually... Oh, wait, you can put your thumbs down. I don't want you to have to keep them there all day. The story of Peter and the Wolf is actually kind of cool. But when you just hear it with just words, it's not always exactly the, the coolest. All right. So I want to show you. I'm going to go back to Peter and the Wolf. All right. I want to go back to my stuff. All right. And I want to show you what it could be like if we added a little bit of music. It says, now let's hear another version of the story with music composed by, look at that name. It's Sergei Prokofiev. Or Prokofiev, sorry. All right, I don't know why they keep starting in the middle. They said it couldn't be done. What in the world, where is everybody? There you are. This is the story of Peter and the Wolf. Now, in our story, the characters are represented by instruments in the symphony orchestra. For example, the bird by the high sounds of the flute. The duck is played by the gorgeous oboe. The cat is played by the beautiful clarinet. The grandfather by the very low bassoon. is played by three mean horns. Not mean horns, he means French horns. Doesn't that sound like he's like the villain? Don't the French horns sound kind of villainous? I think so. Peter is played by the string section of the orchestra. And the rifle shots are played by the kettle drum and the big drum. Here is our story. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow.
On a branch of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, all is quiet, chirped the bird gaily. I'm actually going to stop there. All right, because I want to ask you guys, I know that that was only just a very short snippet, but do you guys hear or see how music can enhance a story? So what we haven't gone over yet is that each character has their very own sound and that adds to our texture. So at the beginning of that story, before we even really started the story, it talked about how um, Peter is being played by the string section of an orchestra. The cat is being played by a clarinet. The wolf, our bad guy, is being played by the French horns. So every single character has an instrument tied to them. And whenever we talk about those uh, characters in our story, you'll also get to hear those instruments. So we are going to be focusing on each character as we get back to school. And we are also going to be focusing on Peter and the Wolf and the different textures that we hear when we're listening to Peter and the Wolf. So just know that when we come back on Monday, we will kind of be focusing a little bit more on this, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek of it today. Um, and I also want to make sure that you guys understand what I'm asking for uh, for your um, your homework for the rest of the week. I know that some people have turned it in already, but I did want to give a little extra time today. Um, I know I told you I was going to give you some, some time last time, and I think you had like four minutes. So I wanted to make sure I give you about 10 minutes today to also continue working on that. Um, and remember, we have texture, which is the different layers of the different sounds that you're going to hear in our music. We have um, our dynamics, which is going to be our volume. What kind of volumes do you hear in our music? and our tempo. What kind of tempos or what kind of speeds do you hear in our music? And then um, also, why do you like it? Why did you like the song that you picked? I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys have come up with. Uh, and so I, like I said, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes now to work. Um, and I will also stay on if there are any questions. Um, so you guys, we're going to say goodbye for right now. But if you do have questions, please go ahead and stay on. Um, and if not, I will see you guys on Monday. All right. Goodbye, boys and girls. All right.